don't turn that station because you're going to, if you keep on the station, you're going to see a really, really, really good show. Our guest tonight is Chris Roebling. He, of course, everybody would know, he's, he's a PR consultant, but he's been in and out of the media. He's been involved in government. He's done everything, but he's a private sector kind of guy now. He can analyze everything. You're going to find out about the Republican gubernatorial primary. You're going to find out why Bill Daley really dropped out of the race. You're going to find out how these guys could win, those Republican candidates, if they listen to Chris Roebling. You're going to find out about Obamacare and about defunding and about the government and whether there should be a shutdown. Oh, you're going to find out so much. Don't turn that dial. It's going to be, if you do, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name. Berkowitz is my name, not your name. And politics is our game. And we are going to be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening. Because as I said, we have Chris Roebling. He is a principal at Jane Thompson Associates. He's been there for the last 10 years. Prior to that, he's been in and out of the media. He's essentially owned WBEZ. He was on there all the time. <laughs> he interviewed the president, the former president of the United States, George W. Bush who had Mayor Daley, Richard M. Daley there, just so he'd feel comfortable. He did that all at the Union League Club. Chris Roebling owns the Union League Club. Oh, that, that, that is not true. That's not true. <laughs> that is not he true. kind of, they treat him like he owns it. It's such a great place. A little plug for the Union League Club of Chicago. Thank David Cohn and Chris Roebling. He does it. Mr. David Cohn, Mr. Daly. Insight, Brian, Brian Daly. Brian Daly. Yeah. Those three guys have just completely energized public affairs. Their programming is so great. Look, everybody know I never suck up to people, but I'm doing such a great job of sucking up now. But seriously. Much appreciated. Chris has done a lot. So, but the main thing, Chris, if you've done so much, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then you would know. I mean, people every day we're hearing about the crime on the west side, mm -hmm. south side of Chicago. Last week, well, the mayor was in D.C. doing what? Well, we don't know, folks, because I'm the only reporter who even asked. But I was told it was, he was doing, what he was doing was on his private calendar. Hmm. Private ca But I was told he was meeting with two Obama cabinet officials, but that was on his private calendar, so they couldn't tell me which two. Or what he was doing, they wouldn't tell me. Hmm. And so he was there in Washington. He'd flown out the night before, I think. Um, maybe he flew out that morning, and he was going to meet with those guys. And then he was going to go on in the afternoon. Did you know what he was going to do in the afternoon? No. He was going to a fundraiser for the guy running for the U.S. Senate seat, the Democrat in New Jersey, whose name would be? Uh, Cory Booker. Name. Cory Booker. There yeah. you go. Booker. Yeah. So Booker, but Booker wasn't going to be at the fundraiser because he was in San Francisco raising money. So here's a guy who is mayor of what? Mayor of Newark? Newark, yes. He has nothing to do. The schools are fantastic in Newark, okay? They are fantastic. Kids in 12th grade are probably reading at the fourth grade level. I'm exaggerating a little bit. You'd think he might have done school voucher school of choice. He one day believed that. So he could have been at the schools doing that. He could have been doing something about the crime in Newark or New Jersey. No, but he was in San Francisco raising money for his U.S. Senate race, and the mayor of Chicago rampant shootings, what was he doing? He was going to go to a fundraiser in Newark. Right. Does this make any sense? I'm going to stop right there. Does it make any sense? Uh, I think it's typical of the out-of-touch political class that is doing to Washington what it's already done to Springfield and indeed to the city of Chicago and Cook County. And nobody asked. And then Rom felt so embarrassed because the headline that morning was 19 shootings in four hours last night. And so he cut short his trips. He cut short his visits on the private calendar right. in the White House, right. where they wouldn't tell me who he was meeting with. Mm -hmm. And when I said, why was he returning, the press office said, I mean, we know why. Sure. 
Well, you, you're a PR guy. Why was he returning? To show leadership. To show leadership. Well, they said he was returning because of things and circumstances. Things and circumstances. Would you sort of advise them to do that? No. Do you think they should get Jane Thompson and Associates? No, no, to... we don't work with government agencies. Oh, you don't agencies. work for government. <laughs> 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 but if you did, you could have done better to well, show you would have said, press office, tell Jeff Berkowitz, One Mayor hopes. Emanuel's returning to yeah. next show leadership. But what would because that leadership a, be? Because he came back, and you know what he did that evening? Do you know the leadership he showed? What does anybody ever do when 19 people get shot and a three-year-old gets killed, and this happens repeatedly, and you're the mayor, and you ran on public safety, and you said one of the three major things you would do was improve public safety. What did the mayor do that night to improve public safety? I'm not sure. He, he had a vigil. We always have prayer vigils. The uh, solution to violence is? A prayer vigil. Prayer vigil. Yeah. Okay. If you're Rahm Emanuel. Would we want to think about, well, let me just turn to you, Chris. Sure. What would you do if you were advising the mayor? I know you don't do government work, but if you right. were, and he said to you, God, for two years now, I haven't really, you know, done much to stop. The, everybody talks about crime. They don't mean crime in Chicago. They mean killings and shootings mm -hmm. on the west side mm -hmm. and the south side. Folks, the north side, that's generally okay. Mm -hmm. The northwest area, that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just the west side and the south side, right? Right. Okay, so he ran on making it better. I should say it bleeds into the southwest side, both okay. on the Englewood side. Englewood, uh, 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 what are some of those? Lawndale. Like Chatham. Lawndale moves Lawndale. down into okay. and we Englewood moves out. To People watching this yeah. in Chicago, yeah. you know, you know you're living in an unsafe area. You know only recently did Rahm and the government of the city of Chicago say you'd be allowed to hold a gun in your home because they thought if anything happened, you should just call the police and wait until you're dead and then the police would get there. But now, the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supremes have said? Uh, well, they've said that concealed carry, or they've said that the Second Amendment actually means something. And so it has to mean something in Illinois. But this political class okay. to which I okay. was referring a moment ago. I want to go back to that. <laughs> Folks, absolutely. this is public, this is the second show in the running, because Charles Thomas was on before, remember last week? And Charles ran the show. It was public affairs with Jeff, nope, I almost said, it was public affairs with Charles Thomas. Tonight's show? Public Affairs with Chris Roebling. I'm, 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 I'm a facilitator. You. I know, I'm, I'm a facilitator. <laughs> I have nothing to say about what the show's about. What would you like it to be about, Chris? Well, I'm, I'm here to respond to your okay. questions. Well, I thought I asked, you know, simple me. What's the reason? What, what's the fix? How do we fix the yeah. rampant shootings and killings on the south side and west side of Chicago? Maybe we can get a graphic up. Chris can't see it, but our viewers will see if they can get the right graphic up that shows the cure, the way to fix the rampant shootings and killings. And what does this graphic say? Well, so you, I can speak no, to first you well, just my, tell me your view. Well, my, my view relates to the quality of police patrols in terms of the immediate. Now, th this kind of violence is like bleeding. It's like arterial bleeding. And you've got to stop the bleeding before you can help the patient. The okay. patient is society. Excuse me just for a second. You keep talking a second, but our viewers can see some of the possible solutions up there, which we'll tell them about in a second. All right. there I is just want you to see that what you're watching here is possible solutions, not necessarily like things I recommend, just things that are thrown okay. out by people. The, the, the and Noah, you're saying, now what, relative, tell us what the solution is in your view. Well, relative to, to spot, stop the bleeding. Relative to spot violence, there is flexibility in policing. But relative to violence in society, there is one solution, and really only one solution, and I think it is profoundly ignored by government as we know it, and that is family structure. Okay. Okay? And, and family structure is, is very meaningful, and it has been very much deconstructed in the neighborhoods that we're referring to. And that has bled into a lot of different social pathologies. Could we do something that... See, Rahm came in and he ran for mayor. You remember that in 2011? Yes. And remember he said there were three major things. In your view, what were... Well, in my view, he said there were three was major things. Violence, schools, and jobs. Well, actually, I think it was public safety, which would be violence. Schools, we agree on. I don't think he said jobs. I think he said the third thing was city finances. Right. Maybe jobs would be... Well, I don't know where jobs would be. Look, Rahm's a guy. He's a government guy. To him, jobs means 
you know, creating jobs for the government, and every time a private company comes in, have a press release and have a thing, a ribbon cutting to say, oh, Navistar came back to the city or something. I, 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 well, I'm not here to defend Rahm, okay. but I, I will say this. I think that Rahm Emanuel is the most cosmopolitan individual we have ele ever elected mayor, and I happen now to live in Riverside, not in the city. Number two, I think that he has seen a lot, and he's an intelligent guy, and he knows what the problems are. Number three, I think that he is trying. What, I, what we see in Rahm, I think what we see in this political class is a lack of courage. Okay, so that when you get toe-to-toe -to -toe with Karen... He lacks courage. He, I, so I the think guy, that, excuse me, but the guy who people used to say when he walked in the Capitol halls, this was the guy who turned the Congress, the House of Representatives, from Republican, from red to blue, from Republican right. to Democrat, and he got the right candidates, he recruited the right. right candidates. He, he recruited did, a they, lot of... If they didn't say what he said they should say, he told them. The word was you could hear the clanking when he walked down the right, halls. The right. clanking of? Yeah, I understand. Uh, Our viewers may not understand. Do you want to tell them clanking of? That he clanked when he walked down the hall. Well, but we know. I, okay. but what, I'm, what I'm So how could this is, guy lack courage if they described everybody was so afraid of him and you're saying he doesn't have the courage to stand up to Karen Lewis? I th Karen Lewis, everybody should know, is president of the Chicago Teachers Union. Well, we've already seen that he failed to stand up to okay. Karen Lewis. And I wonder, the, the big question for Rahm Emanuel as he faces re-election is going to be where can he point to demonstrably better circumstances after he took office than what he inherited when he came in? And I would I would say that you know city finances are still in very deep trouble. Can't, can't point now to violence that. violence is we've got we've got things going on. I mean the number of murders is actually down no, over from last, last year. year but, yep. Exactly. But he came in in 2011. It went up in 2012. It's right. gone down this year because it's been warmer. Okay. Well, excuse me, it's been colder. It's been colder than and it was. And because the temperature went down, the crime wave went down, and you think people in Chicago are so freaking stupid, so, as Rod would say, effing stupid, that he's all he has to say is, well, from 2012, it went up, and I was mayor, but then 2013, it goes down, so reelect me two years later. I, think I mean, do you think, really, they're that dumb? No, I don't think they're that or dumb. Or just but nobody else has $12 million, which is what he took to free to get reelected. That would be it. I, nobody else has $12 million. Well, that's also true. Uh, the number of people who can stand up to Rahm Emanuel politically in the city well, of Chicago. Well, you could, or I could, but we're not going to run. Well, politically means with the fundraising ah, and okay. with the support. So I, I, I think that Rahm is probably in pretty decent shape for reelection. But wait a second. So he didn't, he didn't do anything about city finances. You said he and hasn't. He, he hasn't. He didn't done, do much on violence, he, he, uh, other than it got better from 2012 to 2013. I, I, I think on violence. I, I mean, look, it is a it is a heartbreaking tragedy every morning when we wake up and we find out how many people were shot the night right. before. There's no question about it. I don't doubt that he is trying. Now, wait I a second. Think, Did he do anything? We'll come to trying. Oh, later. I, oh, I think your that, report card. Remember when you were like in fourth grade? Right. You had ABCs. That's what the people cared about. And then the trying. I think the effort. Right. The effort stuff, is over on the side. Yeah. Your I parents, that, my parents, they didn't care so much. They didn't care. About Where it. were the A's and B's? Yeah. So, okay. So Rob, same thing. Don't tell us trying. You can go to your okay, mom and dad here, for I'll, that. I'll okay. do it. City finances, I would say C minus. C minus. Okay. okay. Education, I would say C minus. I would say on violence, violence, I would say probably a C. Okay. I would give him so a C on C that. C minus, one. C minus, and C. Yeah. And you think he gets reelected with that? Yeah, that's These because, sort of like you get a gentleman C and you get reelected? Yeah, well, because I, as I said, I don't think there are a lot of people who can stand up to him with the amount of funding okay. that he has, with the amount of institutional support that he has, with the okay. sort of prominence Folks, that he enjoys. We'll do a little spontaneity here. If you have ideas of people who have... This entire program is spontaneous. If you we have ideas nothing. of anybody <laughs> who has these, two of these, okay, can't say the word. So if you have somebody who can stand up to Rom in 2015 and run for mayor, would you send it over to Jane Thompson Associates? Well, I, I, I'm no, not, I know you don't do government, but send it to him. I don't because do campaigns. Either. I know, but just send it, and he'll, right. he'll help you out. He'll do it pro bono. He'll well, do it no, pro wait a minute. Bono. Hold it. I'm not... <laughs> okay. Or if, if that doesn't work, send it to jbcg there you at go. aol.com. There you go. And I will. And you'll get I'll, that have, I'll put on them the on program. TV. You'll yeah. have them on the show. And they will get reelected because for the next two years, I promise, we'll devote every week to that person, whoever that is, they get on the show. Yeah. Two weeks of free TV. Free. Uh, that, but you lot. have to answer my tough questions. Yes. There ain't no such thing as free TV or a free lunch, as Milton would say. All right. All right. I'm so waiting good. for one of those tough questions. Well, here's, well, here's an idea. Okay. How about Stephanie Neely? She's a city treasurer. Oh, no. Do you know I Stephanie? Mean, no, yes. let's think of candidates. 
Stephanie, I haven't how talked we, with her. How did we get on Toronto? I thought we were going to talk about the state situation. We'll, go, we'll come back. We'll rates. come back. Just in one more minute, right. and we'll do that. One more minute. Okay. Uh, so Stephanie Neal, Tony I'm going to throw out some. Let's see if we can get the. the let's see if we can get those, Repub those challengers to Ron Emanuel. I'm so thrilled. Look, we have one Stephanie person. Stephanie Neely. Let me just see. Tony Preckwinkle. We have one person who runs everything. Terry Polis. The guy is fantastic. He's unbelievable. I mean, as a director, do you know what it takes to do everything? Look at that. He's got the graphic right up there. 2015 challengers okay. to Mayor Emanuel. Okay. And who are they? I got to read Karen Lewis, possibly. Karen, Karen okay. Lewis. Stephanie Neely. Stephanie Neely. Uh, Bishop Davis, who Bishop is Davis. head of the, uh, or involved in the African American radio, Clergy Radio Coalition. host or Joe, or Joe Meeks. Walsh. Jo radio host Joe Walsh. We got Joe five. Walsh. All right, so we got five. And I should mention, I should mention Jay Steinberg, who's like a brother to me. I keep pointing there. I never know where to point. Jay Steinberg, he's out there because he works for Comcast. He's out there helping us. So we've got two people, really. Jay, Jay's going to Jay's, run? No, but these are the two oh, guys who bring, out, right. every day who bring, every Terry. week who brings public affairs to you. Thank okay? you, Jay. Thank you, Terry. All right. And uh, so any of those candidates sound right? Stephanie Neely, Reverend uh, uh, Bishop Davis, Reverend Meeks. You know what? See, what, those, what they have in common, like, let's just be racial for a second. I know we'll get to the Republican candidates. There's a major African-American base here in Chicago. Right. In fact, David Axelrod once said to Barack when he wanted to run for the U.S. Senate, don't do that. Wait till you can run for mayor. This is the genius of David Axelrod. Okay. Wait till you, run for, you can run for mayor but as an opportunity, Barack, when the racial stuff works in your favor. Don't run for the U.S. Senate. The genius was telling Barack not to run for the U.S. Senate, which led to a presidential run. The genius, David Axelrod, come on and defend yourself. You cannot take a credit for that. If Barack, if Barack had listened to you, he would never have been president. Uh, well, but go on. Okay. All right. So any of those candidates sound good to you? Uh, they're all dedicated public servants. I'm they're not sure African -American? any. I'm not sure any of them will be able to. Any one of them can okay. build up the support that's necessary to make a serious race for mayor. Okay, I said one minute. Joe Walsh. Thirty seconds. Okay, Joe's not going to do it. No, Joe, we love, but but you know who could? Okay, Stephanie Neely came out for stop and frisk. Yes, you know that yes. took a lot of courage on her part yes, because it did. people who had racial profiling. She says, trust me, if you do it in the South and the West Side, it's all black on black crime. You're not racial profiling if you get the guns away from them. I'm not sure. And you know what she said about school vouchers? Unlike Rom, who's vitriolic against school vouchers, right. even though he's for charter schools. You know what Stephanie said? I'd like to see the empirical evidence on that. And then I'll say, and maybe it would be okay. Doesn't that show intelligence, yes. thoughtfulness? Yes. She could run in a heartbeat, and she's pretty. Look, I, I don't want to be sexist, but it helps. It helps to be attractive, right? I'm, I'm told. There you go. You I'm just told. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Jeff, you <laughs> right. and I wouldn't know. Well, not. Of course not. Okay. All right. So we have stop and frisk out is one way to deal with violence, but also yeah. Neely's got that. Yeah. I said more okay. gun control. Oh my gosh, I mean, that, I, I, okay. I, I know what you got to say. Mayoral. But the main thing is school thing. choice. If you had school vouchers school and school choice. choice, you improve education and it takes a little longer time. But once kids can learn to read, write, and so forth, they don't go into gangs, they stay in school, they go on to college, your violence problem is solved. Right up there. You heard it. You agree? Yes. Okay, now we can go to the Republican candidates for governor. Okay. Who, tell, tell our viewers. Maybe we can show the graphic at the same time as you're talking. Uh, what would you like me to and there discuss? There we can see. Well, look, I, they're throwing up the wrong right now. I, I, I want to say that we're who are they? Who are they? Just give us the four names: uh, Bruce Rauner, Kirk Dillard, Dan Rutherford, and Bill Brady. How would you want to analyze them one by one? Well, you, you wrote was, an email. Did you send an email to these guys recently? Yeah, I did. And I, and I can told we them talk about it. Campaign. Is it a public email? No, but I, I'm sure I'm, I'm free to talk about it. And, I, and I'll tell it. you, condense it. Yeah, what, I told them that their campaigns were pathetic so far. Okay, I sent them an all email. All four of these guys. All four of them. I said that I, I don't want anything from any one of you, but as an Illinois Republican, I deserve a first-rate campaign from each of you. And no first-rate campaign has so shown Bruce up. So Bruce Rauner, who's got, I've heard the last, Charles Thomas, he knows he's got politics. a lot of money. Charles Thomas said $700 million. Okay, he's got, that's a lot of money to that's, me. I don't know about He should be know. able to manage a good campaign with that. And, you know, it Senator, takes more than money. Senator Bill Brady has Bill Brady. run for... Governor yes. Came in 2010, close. almost won. Came so close. he should know how to should do it. Should have won. He should know how to do it. Our good friend, good in the sense that he's been able to come on the show. Mr. Rauner's not. That's okay. That's We're not okay. offended that no. the person who has $700 million doesn't have this okay. to come and on the show. I see you're still holding that. All right. So if it, okay. Dan Rutherford, has he Dan been on Ruth the show? He, Kirk Dillard? A long time, three or four years ago, because okay. you know Dan's not ready to take a position. Okay. So he's. he's this is part she's, of my. He, so Dan's state treasurer. 
he just rounded out. Yeah. And then Senator Kirk Dillard, who yes. almost won the primary, Yes. You're also saying he's running a pathetic campaign. I think they're running I a pathetic campaign. I think their campaign. campaigns Brady, are pathetic. Brady, Browner, all four of these guys. I think they're running pathetic campaigns, and if they keep you doing... You won't be invited to dinner parties if you keep talking that way, Chris. I have a lot to go to anyway. Uh, and I'm not doing this because I want to go to dinner parties with any of these guys, although I, would, I like I them all. I would love to go to a dinner I, party. I, I, have you ever been to a dinner party in Winneka where Bruce Rauner lives? Oh, they're so cool. Bruce, despite what I said, I'll be very well behaved if you invite me to a dinner party. Okay. I okay. Uh, uh, want to say. You don't want to go to dinner parties, but I would like to go. Okay. I'll all bring, right. I'll bring I, Chris along. My, my fingers are crossed <laughs> for you, okay? Uh, but I want to say this. Yes. What, if these guys continue the way they have been going, they're going to lose. And, and that is experience talking. I could be wrong, but I will tell you that if we are going to use the same What are they doing pattern, wrong? What are, just well, I don't, try to I be don't, specific. What I is, don't think that they're clear. I don't think that they're- The message is not clear. I don't think they're them. clear. I don't think they're specific. I don't think they're sharp. I don't think they're understandable. I, I think okay. it's very hard if you're I, a person who reads the newspapers as I am oh. to understand- You have that newspaper what, there. Do you want to use it as no, a- No, I, I just, this is a newspaper and I read it. You're this is the Sun-Times. I read the Let the Tribune. record reflect that the witness this, is referring to the Chicago Sun-Times. The Chicago Sun-Times from and today. And that up just so people okay, see. Okay, great. Here. So there's a picture Ooh. of Alderman Burke. Burke. If I could please- No, get, I'll give it back to you a second. I just want to, you know, you, you, if you're going to do this- There you, do you go. It. This is the- You should have a little picture there of this. There you go. If we're going to refer to our good friends at the Chicago Sun-Times. There you go. That's the Chicago Sun-Times. Thank you. Which Chris is holding up as sort of the scholarly paper that he reads for his. Well, I, I read all these newspapers, but if I all may, which can you, I have this back? What else does it include, just so people will know? What? The Chicago Tribune, the Tribune Wall, the Street, Wall Journal, Street Journal, the Financial else? Times, the New York Times. Okay, wow. now, so well here we go. Yes. Um, if these guys continue doing what they've been doing, they're going to lose. And if we as a party think we can approach this year as we have approached all recent years, right. take that back 20 years or whatever, then we're going to lose. I mean, we have got to do things that we have not done. And, and one, two, three, four, what are they? I would say, number one, we've got to have a clear ideological difference between ourselves and the Democrats. We cannot be okay. the less of same party. Okay. Number two, okay. we've got to be simple and understandable. Number three, and this is probably more important than one or two, our leadership, the Republican Party's leadership, has got to be rooted in identification. And here's what I mean by that. It is, the, it is at the kitchen tables like this all over the state that people are talking about their reduced income security, their reduced retirement security. They're concerned about whether that they can pay for college. They're concerned about whether or not their kids are going to get jobs, Jeff, in the state of Illinois. It sounds like Barack Obama's campaign for the U.S. Senate in 2004. I don't so. know if it does or doesn't. Yeah, you I'm talked about health care and education. These are and... the concerns of right. people, and they need to know that we're not going to spend our way into another bankruptcy because we went bankrupt in 1842. Now you're differing from Barack Obama. We are not going to tax our way into reducing our economy, which is what we've been doing. Now you're differing from Obama. Okay. <laughs> We're going to spend money parsimoniously and effectively because when you are spending money on a government program, you have a duty to uphold. Okay. Now you're differing from President Obama. I'm really sorry, but that's not why I'm here. No, I'm, I'm here just, to talk. I was pointing you're out to people. You're asking me about the Republican but you started program. Out, but you started out, but very seriously, when I said what should it be, you were saying things that sounded very similar to Barack Obama's 2004 Democratic primary campaign for the Senate, health care. You said people. He said people were sitting around the table. People said, are these sitting are, around. These there. are what they call them lunch bucket issues. Well, it, it, bread here, issues. Here, let me let me just they say were, they were concerned ever, ever about the cost of education, cost of college, let me the put quality it of this, education. Let me put K it to you 12. this way. So you were ever since, you were in sync with Barack on that. Ever since we elected Barack, all of those issues became more troubling. Okay. okay. And this is what now he okay. is. I, okay. I said at the beginning that the same okay. Democratic insensitive ruling elite. Is, which has done to city hall and county building what it did to Springfield is that's now going on in we Washington. We only have five minutes left. Because so. we talked about, but mayor that's fine. For but you're going to get to keep. Cats. You're going to get to keep talking. Go and ahead. I'm just going to prop you. Thank you. So tell people a little bit what has to be done specifically and what these candidates okay. do right. on taxes. Here, on here. taxes, what should Rauner, Dillard, Brady, and Rutherford be saying on taxes? Absolutely, they should say that that so-called temporary tax increase will come off, that there will not be a graduated income tax, and, and that the differences are going to be made up out of state spending. 
not out of the pocketbooks of average well, Illinois. Well, you mean you're, they're going to cut state spending at the same time as they cut the income tax the, back to the old rate from 5% to they, 3%. The Democrats, when they ran that through in the middle of the night, promised it was temporary. Now they're saying it's not going to be temporary. We have to say that was a temporary, and we're not going to change yeah. those those plays in the we're not going to change so those signals in the middle of the play. They lose six That's billion dollars, be, which has been going currently for the pension payments. No, it has not been going for the pension payments. That was well, raised gonna, under false go. pretenses. Well, some of it's okay. been going to the pension so, payments. So, so number you're asking, what do we? Okay. The the Republican candidates okay. need to stand up and speak, and and they need to do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something really crazy because I told you if we do things the way we've done them before, we're gonna lose. So we got to do things differently. Here's what you. We've got to get these candidates coordinated to go out on a specific Republican program in all four quadrants of the state. And they should start speaking to education, to the spending problem, to the taxing problem, to growing jobs in the economy in Illinois. And they should be moving around the state so that people in the state know that they have a choice that they don't have to stick with the Democrats. And they're going to choose those, Dem those Republican primary voters you're suggesting hearing Rauner, hearing Brady, hearing Dillard, hearing Rutherford speak, they would decide who is the best spokesperson on those issues and, to, and to win in the general election. Is they, that your point? Uh, my, competition, the is, patron saint of the consumer. This is we my theory. Competition by this the is my theory. But I also want to say, Jeff, I'm excited by the prospect that there are a lot of disaffected Democrats whether they're in yeah. the city of Chicago, the county of Cook, the Collars, or downstate. Who may decide to vote in the, in the and, Republican and the, primary. The, and the, and the Democrats, they may not have a choice. Here's another thing that's unlike what we've done. Every Democrat, every independent, every wayward soul out there who hasn't voted in 25 years ought to be welcomed into the Republican Party primary next March. Invite them. We need invite to invite them, them to come to in, vote in the and Republican to express primary. their feelings about whether it's Kirk Dillard or Bill Brady or Dan Rutherford or Bruce well, Rauner. But, but i got to tell you, you know, there's some problems with what you say. I mean, it sounds very good. You're, you're excellent. Isn't this guy good? He should probably be running for governor because you're giving basic communication strategy advice. Then these guys can come to you because you won't do government work. I understand that. Or political work or campaign work. But you're saying speak with clarity, speak. Um, they have to delineate themselves and they've got to show people differentiate that their product, them. They, have a brand. What, what I brand. believe Illinois Republicans must do is give back to the people of Illinois the future that has been squandered by this crew that runs Springfield you know, there and are, City Hall. There are a lot of social conservatives, and we only have two minutes, but it's worth noting, we say they want a guy who's strongly pro-life. They ought to they, vote for that person. I've got no problem with that. Well, then Bruce but, Rauner has to talk about his position, and then they're going to say, well, then, we, we don't like you, that, Bruce, because well, you're not pro-life. You know, I mean, Do you Bruce, think Bruce wants to talk about something? I don't know what he wants to do, but I'm telling you this in the marketplace of ideas. This is why he doesn't come ideas. on here, because I would ask him his position. Okay, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I haven't asked him, but I can tell you this. If you're going to run, in a primary, right. you're going to be asked questions, and you're going to be judged accordingly. So tell this to Bruce. So Bruce, in the no, general, I'm, I'm, but in I'm the general election, your, no, but in the general election, I'm on Bruce, your program. But on the general election, Bruce will have to answer this. It's, it, you can avoid my I, show. I, I'm not here focusing on Bruce or I know, against you're, Bruce. You're, I'm just, you're, you're, you're I'm Mr. saying you're Mr. Nice. These to guys have got okay. to start speaking okay. clearly and succinctly. Okay. We're going to continue to speak as the you and I will speak. But I very much want to thank our guest, Chris Roebling. That privilege is all. Have you gotten to speak a little bit more than you often do here? I certainly got to speak a lot about mayor of the city. Of no, Chicago. you talked about all the Republican candidates okay. and what yes. they should do. Yes. You read your email. That's right. For God's sakes, I give you this. It's terrific. Thank you. This is my bread. Eat this. Thank yes. you. Okay. You all right. That. So all right, we, so we get to keep chatting. You got like 15 seconds left. Okay, that's great. Give me the best shot you got. The best shot that I've got is you can have a future in Illinois, vote Republican. Under the Democrats, I don't think we can you're say not that looking. On the show, but that's okay. <laughs> he means hypothetically speaking. If you under the Democrats, your future is being systemically robbed, systematically robbed from you. Now you're talking about state government or I'm federal government. I'm talking about the whole kit and should, caboodle. Should, should Obamacare be defunded? I, after the sooner the better, but that won't happen under President Obama. So, so you, you, have to, you you've got to negotiate at some point, but get as much as you can in the negotiation. Everybody who says, "Why did Bill Daley drop out of the Democratic primary for governor?" Because I believe he began to see.